Julian! What? F fuck it! Do you remember Motorstorm RC? Oh! On the Vita! Oh, fuck! What is that? In 1999... Shut up. In 1999, Evolution Studios was formed by a couple British. According to an unsighted paragraph on Wikipedia, they threw together a tech demo on PC with rally cars. They were immediately picked up by Sony and handed the WRC license. World Rally Championship! The rally organization! That would be like making a prototype for a new method of scanning feet into 3D and then wow. being handed the FIFA license. Insane if true. Sure, man. Anyway, they made WRC in 2001. It's fine. They were a small team and I'm pretty sure they had no time, but yeah, it's fine. Once Evo had set up that foundation, though, they used yearly installments to refine the formula. By the time we hit number five, it wasn't actually called number five, but it was a whatever. completely different beast. Lo and behold, when creative people are allowed to fail and given time to refine their craft, they eventually make better things. Case and point: WRC Evolved is really, really good. It handles great. It looks amazing. It's full of personality. I, I especially love the new navigator. He's always got some shit to say. Are you aiming for? Best. Name another rally game where your opponents break down ahead of you, your navigator warns you, There's a marshal on the road. you ignore him, you eat shit, oh, lucky pal. and then get consoled by said navigator for eating shit. This game is sick as fuck! It's also the last one they made. Cheeky little shits decided to go out by naming their final entry after themselves. Just like how Metallica stopped making music after the Black Album. Or how Muse stopped making music after Black Holes and Revelations. Who is they, Matthew? With the success of the WRC games, Evolution had evidently become chill enough with Sony to be granted the gift of make new launch title now for brand new awesome baby console now, now. Joining such hits as NBA, Tony Hawk, Tony Woods, Tony Madden, NBA again, and Ridge Racer was Evo's own MotorStorm, a completely new IP. Also, it wasn't a launch title, they just bundled it with a bunch of PS3s soon after. Fuck you! It did launch with the PS3 since the console only released for us Europeans in early 07. I recall many a broke European moon were spent queuing up at our FNACs, performing Dragon Force on Expert for the broke European hoes I imagined in my head while they performed European fellation on Expert on my broke European peanuts, hoping for a glimpse of the aforementioned gay baby- Awesome baby machine. Sorry. Awesome baby machine and its new games. Fuck you. Sorry. Personal fondest memory was watching fellow Europeans who knew only of Grand Torsimo repeatedly blowing themselves up because they thought the cross button meant go and not blow up. Uh, yeah, we say cross button here. What are you gonna do about it, you Yankee stop, postule? Stop being mean. After securing the launch edition of Piss Station 3, the one with the, the whole ass Piss Station 2 in it, from Media Marked and an extra six axis controller, the one that fucking sucked, my dad and I popped in our MotorStorm disc, bursting with piss. Sure. The graphics, the sound, the music. Is the second controller on? I it is. Oh my god! This game doesn't have split screen! I just wasted so much money! To the disappointment of many a racist, MotorStorm 1 had no local multiplayer, which back then was practically unheard of. Likely because it was a launch title. But my dad had a theory that Sony wanted to force people to buy multiple copies to play online with friends. My dad also thought Israel had an army of mutated bumblebees with mutated stingers that make their victims gay. Shut up, dude. No one's falling for that. No. TV, which is basically Fox News for the Portuguese, uh, dropped a story in the early 2000s covering a new strain of bumblebees that definitely spread the homosexual through their stingers. Fuck are After you that, they said that the bees were from Israel, where my dad, shaking his head, proudly proclaimed, I knew it! They're always up to something. I, I, I don't believe you! This is a true, Julian! You will not cut so this! So Motorstorm comes out, got it bundled, my nine-year-old expectations were not high. Why are they off-road? 
Where are the cops? Where's Halo? Surprise! It's incredible. The festival setting, the slipknot in my ears, the mud in my mouth, the minimalist HUD giving way to dirt and shrapnel being spat in my eyes. It does the thing that the best racing games do. Have cars. It manages to transport you from your sad bedroom into the roll cage of an improvised explosive. You are become awesome, driver of car! You hear about Haze? It's the Halo Killer. I can't reach the controller. Imagine if Forza Horizon was off-road. And, and a blood sport. And a better video game. Evolution took all the tools they built and all the skills they learned from five years of making rally games, threw on some drum and bass, and slapped together an absolute banger video game. I don't know how much time they had to make this, but judging by when the last WRC came out, it couldn't have been long, which just makes the fact that it's functional all the more impressive. Never mind the fact that it fucking rules! You can feel the weight of the car and the way it handles. Everything from your opponents to the track itself feel like they're out to get you. The constant chaos forces you to think on your wheels, like with cars. If you're not stupid and European, you may notice the little boost bar on the bottom left. Unlike traditional arcade racers where it's earned, here you just have it. And there's no limit to how much you can use it. Instead, simply explode. This is perfect game design. I'm not going to disagree, but I will say that you're right. Boosting puts you way over your top speed, forcing you to make quick decisions on whether to use it to overtake, or course correct, or explode. The blast of which, by the way, launches you forward. You are encouraged to win races via explode. How this game blends silly speed with mechanical depth is quite good. Yeah, good. I, I was gonna say that. Yeah. With upwards of 15 guys squeezed into maze-like tracks, Motorstorm is a rat race. If opponents aren't driving off cliffs or exploding, they're barreling over you or plowing through each other to get to you. And then exploding. To come out on top, you don't just need to be good at race. That's not enough. These vehicle classes aren't just for show. Bikes are quick and nimble, but hate mud and have an affinity for lockers. Whereas something like big rigs are an unstoppable force and stupidly fast but they take forever to get fast and corner like an immovable object. They don't dump all of this on you at once, thankfully. You're given just enough time early on to familiarize yourself with everything. But at higher levels, with no minimap and minimal HUD, and you're European, maybe, you aren't just rewarded, you are forced to learn how different cars handle and which track lanes complement them. God, this game steps on your fucking balls at higher levels. Th th this arcade racing game has fucking knowledge checks. What is this? It's awesome. You are true. That said, it's far from a perfect game. The growing pains of a launch title are on full display, sometimes in endearing ways, like with the dinky PS2 ass UI, and other times in more obvious ways, like with the load times. Hold on, I don't like this car. But considering that this was a launch title from a studio who hadn't made anything like this before, this was certainly an achievement for the cell processor. Thank, thank you, Shuhei Yoshida. Uh, Julian wrote down, Ed makes kissing sounds here. While Evo was finishing up with WRC, their daughter studio, Big Big Studios, was slaving away on their own shit. In 2005, we saw the first fruit of their labor, Pursuit Force, the PSP game that plays like that one part of Uncharted 2, but that's the whole real game where you use nail guns to add fatalities to your justice meter with the Mafia, the Yakuza, paramilitary, escaped convict, and women. This happened to my friend Jared once. 
Rated 12 and up. I played this a ton as a kid, and it really shaped me. You can't put a price on justice. Also, I don't care. Anyway, around this t Oh! What? She was flirting with me! Oh! God damn it, oh, fuck! Wow! Oh, wow! Oh, you're so I stupid! Was I was fuck! I was fuck! fuck! Don't cry. We'll be back. Uh, fuck. Seriously, stop. Recording. It's weird. Eyes in the sky. Welcome to the hunt for Hey O'Brien. I'm friend Sam. Uh, I make video games and I helped write some of the other videos on this channel. Uh, two pieces of big news. One, I'm probably getting a new stepdad soon, which is huge. Also, uh, Noodle and I started a podcast, and it's pretty good. Why don't we just sit in silence for the next 10 minutes and so we can think of a funny bit to continue this up with. The newest episode is now available on platforms and you can get it on them. So, do this. You, uh, you, you can. Milk problems? Try this. When your stomach hurt, it can feel like you crashed your car and all your limbs came off your body. I crashed my car and all my limbs came off my body. Also, owie my tum tum. My limbs did grow back though, so... Hi Ed, I am your doctor. I know. Why, why did you get new arms? I don't know, but what is the point of God's miracles if I can't game in my big funny sick oh bed? Oh my god, I have incredible news. I don't see how it could top me regrowing appendages. ROG is selling the Ally X right now! Life is so beautiful! Sporting an upgraded battery, more RAM, an improved joystick durability. It's a, a good handheld gaming! Pride Month is over, Ed! This is your last chance to be an ally! <gasps> Time is running out! Time is running out! Here's how to order! Visit rog.gg slash noodleallyx to order the Ally X. Buy the Ally X, available in one color. The Ally X. It's called the Ally X. The color is called Ally X, and it's the only color. Buy the Ally X. I told you I'd be back. You're, you're still crying. Is this like your thing? Thanks to being one of two launch titles and being bundled with every console- That's not true! There were more than two <laughs> games! <laughs> That's what you sound like, dude. Thanks to being one of two launch titles and being bundled with every console, Motorstorm ended up selling a car jillion copies and becoming a car hold name. So Sony did that thing that always works out for everyone. They bought Evolution. With the acquisition came the announcement of DLC for Motostorm, an explicit statement that nobody was getting laid off. No, really, we promise. I still can't believe that's real. It's I still can't believe that's so literally what they insane. did. All right, go on. Yep. And that we were getting a sequel, Pacific Rift. If I were to be reductive, I would describe this game as the first one, but better. I would like to be reductive. Pacific Rift had four times the biomes, four times the game modes, four times the graphics, four times the players, and one new car. The monster truck frees players to game the true way evolution intended. Like dickhead. Rather than being the fastest, you need only be the fattest. They could barrel over any type of terrain. Rocks, stones, people, gravel, people, me, fuck off. Their massive size being both a boon and an asshole. The tracks got the most out of the good treatment. The variations of brown, like the Cleveland, have been traded in for a handful of discrete biomes, many of which are just straight up breathtaking. Like the Keanu. From the movie. Mechanically, they were fucking bananas. 
Evolution doubled down on the maze-like design with late jungle setting, making shortcuts so hard to spot that I'm still finding new paths right now. What the fuck was that? This is a game where I'm constantly asking myself, is this even part of the track? And Eva would whisper, yes it is, my child. Explode. The best way to sell this is through my favorite track, Sugar Rush. I have no idea how human beings designed this. Narrow hallways, sharp turns, outdoor rally, destructible environments, sprinklers. It is a warehouse, a sugar plantation, and a construction site consistently featuring at least five different paths you it can take. It does not always have that Julian. many routes. Julian? <laughs> It's full of cool little details. If you're a bike, clipping a sugarcane means explode, while big rigs do not give a fuck and will completely flatten them, bypassing a significant portion of the final leg. But bikes can opt to stay glued to said big rigs and they'll unintentionally flatten the corn for you. And then there's a little sewer drain only bikes can fit in that comes out right on the finish line that I only found while recording footage for this very video. What the fuck? In addition to weight-gated shortcuts, we've now been given three additional fire- Fire hazards? <laughs> Dumb fuck. I mean, you're not wrong, yeah, I, I guess. I'm not wrong, yeah. <laughs> this is true. In addition to weight-gated shortcuts, we've now been given three additional hazards aside from mud and mud. Fire and Walter and mud. Fire makes you boost big, while Walter makes you boost small. Walter, however, is super interesting. Deep. The ocean. Oh. Heavier cars can just plow through that shit no problem, but bikes consider Walter an active hazard. Just like the Skylar White. If you try to drive from the show, if you try to drive through a body of Walter on a quad bike, you'll be driven to a drown. Just like the Jesse Pink Man from the opioid addiction. Knowing when to use the motion inputs was key to mastering the bikes. I do not like this game it has motion inputs. I don't like motion inputs. Ah, but you see, it lets the bikes duck by hitting down down or bunny hop by hitting ah, down up. Ah, ah just, just like Remy's Mashari no Hiai from Third Strike. Correct. The introduction of motion inputs generally made the bikes a lot more interesting and awesome. It makes the handling and avoiding of death easier, but also allows evolution to make bike-centric tracks copiously fucked up and evil. Some lanes can only be gotten to by ducking, lest you head explode. Also, b-hopping lets you get the most out of ramps. Look at this shit. To me, it feels like this is the game that evolution originally wanted to make. They had so much fun with it. There are some missions that straight up play like a horror game. The game will tell you one track is motorcycle exclusive, but Evolution are lying dickhead. Enjoy 12 big rigs. This might be my favorite racing game. Pacific Rift hits that sweet spot of skill floor to ceiling ration that I haven't seen since the next Motorstorm game. The one that stinks. Nah, -uh, nah. -uh. Julian? Pursuit Force! Again! People wanted another one of these. This time around, we have more vehicles, more polish, and more mentally thoughtful depictions of criminals, generally. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Jesus! Why were they? Why is that? What the fuck? Why is all of this here? That's how it starts! <laughs> this is why they need more funding. You do not want hard balls busting out of jail and shooting your dog. That is my job. I played this one as a kid, and I found it very forgettable. I know this because I forgot about it until just now. I copped it <laughs> on like a 40% sale on the eBay. If you want to play this unlisted gem, look up... What the fuck is it called? Police Force 40%. As a kid, I would have eaten this shit up. And then I would have donated to the police. And then I would have buried my dog. If Motorstorm is slept on, Arctic Edge rends the gamer catatonic. Welcome to Big Big's take on Motorstorm. For the PSP and the PS2, it's, it's one of those. Even fans of Motorstorm don't talk about this game. Probably because it sucks. All right, that's, that's not entirely fair. Yes, it is. This game sucks. And it's really frustrating because it's nearly quite good. 
It's competent. It looks like MotorStorm. It kind of plays like MotorStorm. It ticks all the boxes from vehicle variety down to the vulgar taunts. But it, it, it just... Like... It sucks. Okay, let me put it this way. I did an experiment where I drove a motorbike and a garbage truck on the same track on normal difficulty back to back. Everything was the same. I didn't switch up my tactics. Kind of just turned my Brian off for both runs. Top fragged. Easy. Try that shit in Pacific Rift and you get your shit pushed in. Turns out if you take a motor storm and remove the mechanical complexity that makes it interesting and a motor storm, the result is an unremarkable racing game. It sucks. It sucks. I haven't played it. It's fine to pass the time, but if I got this on PS2 back in lay day, I'd kind of be ticked the flip off. Returning to the main series, if you'll recall, Pacific Rift ended up selling a carjillion copies and becoming a carhold name, thanks to being cool and awesome. I already said that. Nuh uh. With two platinum releases under the jorts and Big Big also making games, where are we to go next? What now for the Motor Storm? Mayhap uh, the desert? No, no. We we gone we gone there. We done did that. Perchance the ocean. You are a cracker. Weird. How about pray tell the moon? No, that would be stupid. Motor Storm is not motor stupid. <laughs> Fucking awesome and uncharted! <laughs> Call that bitch uncharted! Yeah! 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 It's so stupid! Fuck, I love this game! I love it so much! It's so what stupid! What this looks like the fucking split second game! I know! Yes. Split Second is also a car game where a building explode. You are so good at pattern recognition. Take orange, me give orange, give you orange, me you eat orange, give you. The difference here is that Split Second gives the player control over when thing happen. Whereas in Apocalypse, you are at the whims of thing. This can and does turn your first playthrough into a survival horror game because you never know when the track is going to jump scare you with building explode. <laughs> That was insane. I know! I can't stress enough, this isn't just spectacle. It is a mechanic. Rain cools the engine but makes it tougher to corner. Collapse buildings become ramps, close off existing routes, and tear open new ones. Most of the time you have a second to react, if you're lucky. You could not get away with a move like that in Pacific Rift. Evo completely overhauled the handling, I think. Vehicles are lighter, but got twice the gravity, letting you take corners way harder than before. Also, everything is a lot fucking faster. Boosting through a corner in a super mini makes my monkey brain feel like monkey real and monkey tearing my face off. Fuck Forza's silky smooth camera. I want to feel like I'm barely in control. Put my ass in the pear wiggler. In 3D, this game feels like cocaine. You were probably the only microbe on Earth who had a 3D TV. Yeah, it was fucking awesome for this specifically and nothing else. Okay. I don't have a point of reference for the cocaine. I assume it's awesome. It is. The Skyline track is probably the peak of this design, just like Sugar Rush was for Pacific Rift. Set on the rooftops and penthouse floors of a couple office buildings, it's ostensibly... Uh, ostensible, yeah. Just a big fucking circle. The way Evolution decided to balance it is nothing short of cool. The inner ring of tracks like this are usually the fastest route, right? While Skyline events usually take place during rain, you're practically boosting the entire time. But the inner ring of the track funnels you indoors, rending you rainless, ergo, boostless. It's also cramped as shit compared to the open rooftops. The track gives you so many opportunities to switch lanes throughout a single lap, you're constantly encouraged to experiment. It's fucking brilliant! God, look at that level art. It's fucking game, man. It, it's so dated. It sucks so good. I've been saying, a racing game live and die by the aesthetics. And goddamn if Evo didn't catch a rancid fucking vibe. Pop the disc in. It is 2011. 
everything is just so asinine, so unapologetically, moronically masculine. Dudes will look at this and say, My thoughts and prayers are with all affected by this tragedy! Look, listen, look. I get if this kind of music isn't your thing. Stop watching my videos, Dad. I hope you die of old age. But you have to admit that the way they put this together is still fascinating and ingenious. For MotorStorm's first, and only, completely original score, Sony got Klaus Bedelt, award-winning composer behind such film scores as, perchance, Pirates of the Caribbean, to write a handful of tracks that serve as the game's main themes. commissioned a couple of DJs such as, pray tell, DJ fucking Shadow to remix that material into the bulk of the soundtrack. Again, it goes so fucking hard. This ship out of certain be single cellular, man. I'm about to prove the haters right. I'm about to let the demons win, man. Everyone is working with the same material, so there's an inherent sense of cohesion, despite the soundtrack being produced by multiple people in a very short time frame. It is sick and awesome and cool and sex, and if you don't like it, again, grow old. <laughs> and get over it. Fine, but it's not without its qualms. The city setting and focus on set pieces forces the labia majority of the tracks to be more linear, lest ye miss out on lay awesome set piece exploding. Unlike the previous entries, it's an in-your-face scripted cinematic thing, as opposed to being allowed to breathe and let things explode on their own. Less Halo sandbox, more COD set piece. In the pursuit, like the Force? Mm of a tighter, twitchier experience, the unique handling of every class has been homogenized. The choice of your vehicle barely matters. That's not true! The amalgamation I... doesn't stop here. The motion inputs the bikes have, giving them unique traversal mechanics, are gone. It also takes actual effort to crash them now. My ass was being creamed by monster trucks and I was walking away unscathed. You are exaggerating. You are a cracker. Yes. The new vehicle classes are just the ones we already had, but faster. And while I appreciate the attempt at a proper story campaign, the results are... curious. Look, it's little sashimi. Get off me, you one-eyed skank! What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> She's what the fuck? a girl- she girl-bossed on her. <laughs> Yeah, I really feel like I'm getting to know these characters. That's yes. really fucking awesome, man. Yeah, man. I fucking hate the pregnant. And the disabled? I would have loved this game had it been called anything else. Because, yeah, it is uncarded. Drake's Fortune. Yeah, this is a game I really enjoyed playing through. Once. Your opinion is a tragedy but it is nothing compared to MotorStorm. Apocalypse had an unremarkably huge marketing push from Sony leading up to its 2011 March launch when a 6.3 magnitude earthquake ravaged New Zealand. Tragically, this affected Sony's stock price. They delayed the game's release for a couple months in the region, but it's, it's whatever, it's whatever. The Kiwis were covered and Sony remained awesome. On March 10th, Apocalypse was released in Japan. On March 11th, a 9.1 undersea megathrust earthquake devastated much of eastern Japan. Smaller in scale than the 9.5 in Chile, but it did cause a tsunami and three nuclear meltdowns, so, you know, different strokes. It's not a competition. Do you remember what Motor Storm Apocalypse looked like? Here is what the Japanese marketing looked like. Imagine you are Microsoft, 
It is 2001. On September 10th, you released a flight sim set in New York, where the objective is to fly into as many buildings as possible. You called it Microsoft Awesome Simulator. Based on everything we could find, it would appear that Sony immediately pulled all marketing for the game globally. At that point, the game had not yet launched in Europe. Or America. So if you were wondering why you haven't heard of the game before, now you know! Tragically, this affected Sony's stock price. Fun activity. Watch the credits and see how many jokes about crunching to meet the launch window you can spot. Thank God they met their deadline. Hmm. For most, the story ends here. But what if I told you that another motor storm exists? Not a lot of people know about this one, since it was churned out super quick, but it actually came out for both the PS3 and Vita at the same time with crossplay. You want to see it? Here it is. You like it? It is MotorStorm. Remember Monument Valley? From MotorStorm? Remember Arctic Edge? I'm pretty sure this game flopped, and it's not hard to see why. Nobody I know played it. Ed? I haven't played it. And why would you? Top-down racing games are a bad idea, and I hate them. I had zero expectations of MotorStorm RC going in, and to be honest, did not want to play it. MotorStorm RC is the only top-down racing game I've enjoyed playing, mostly because it has an alternative steering mode where you just point where you want to go that makes the top-down camera uniquely bearable. It also helps that different cars control completely differently and take real practice to figure out. Tracks are shorter but still tricky, races are quicker but opponents are still challenging. It's intentionally low commitment and frictionless, but there's enough mechanical depth for those willing to dig that I'm okay with being called MotorStorm. It's like these evolution guys know how to make a good racing game, or something. May they all explode, and then die, and then explode. Okay. A little harsh. Also around this time, Sony shut down Big Big Studios, laying off an undisclosed studio's worth of people. Remember when they promised they wouldn't do that? Their fourth and final game was called Little Deviants. I haven't played it. Me either. It, uh... Looks more tech demo than game. Hmm. Very Nintendo-esque. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, it's a, maybe it's a good thing that they all lost their jobs. I, I hate seeing devs eat food. When they could be working? Get back to work! Um, waiter! More slop, please! Hello! Did you even hire the man? Where is the man? Cell processor is out. Big graphics are in. Similarly to MotorStorm, the first one, Evolution was again asked to deliver a launch title for the new normal baby machine. But instead of a rally or arcade racer, they delivered a... Live service Simcade. Now, if you are neuronormal and gifted of hind vision, those words would have elicited a negative reaction in your duodenum. What the fuck is a duodendum? It's like the dangly thing at the back of your throat. You know what? I don't care. Released several months after its promised launch date. So it's not a launch title. Are you gonna keep fucking interrupting me, dude? You keep speaking in bullshit. I don't think Drive Club had much hype going for it. Most people I asked didn't even know it was developed by Evolution. Because how would we? It looked nothing like their previous work. We had no idea what Drive Club even was. I had zero expectations going in, and to be honest, did not want to play it. Drive Club is one of the best racing games ever made. It's the perfect marriage- Happy belated Pride Month, Jared. Happy belated Pride Month, Jared. Of everything Evo had mastered. The sense of speed, the chase camera, the overall game feel is just immaculate. Drive Club was a Simcade live service racer that somehow didn't suck complete shit. If you ignore the disastrous launch. Day one drive clubbers had to deal with flaky ass service stability for about a month before it was fixed, with Evo even releasing the first DLC packs for free as an apology. Sorry about Pride Month, Jared. 
The game itself, though, always kicked ass. A big part of that was the decision to not make it another fucking open world. I hate you, Burnout Paradise. I hate you! It's all your fault, Criterion! Then you are good! Get me racist fast! The single player is nothing to drive home about. The appeal of Drive Club is in the way it blends multiple campaigns with its online features. After completing any event, you can set up a custom challenge from corner good, to drift good, to drive good, and if none of your friends can beat it within a set amount of time, you get rewarded. This feature extended to the titular club system. You can make a club with up to six of your friends and take on challenges together. If a member of your club manages to beat the challenge, everyone gets rewarded and your club increases in level, letting you unlock more exclusive shit. It all works seamlessly and feeds back into itself like that one fuck-ass snake. Oh, Jorman Gander. No. The tracks are more traditional this time around, which is... fine. I, I guess. I didn't even like Sugar Rush that much. But they are drop-dead gorgeous. Like, this is a ten-year-old game. What the fuck? Look at this shit! This is so much graphics? How? 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 One time I accidentally turned on the first-person camera, and I was floored by the raindrops. They react in real time to the direction you're driving and the speed of the wipers! Why would you do this? Why? I am now talking about rain. I really want to talk about this game forever, but Julian may soon smite me where I stand. We titled this video Motorstorm A Brief History, not Racism A Measured Response. Getting back on the track, like the Move race, on! I don't think the footage is doing it justice. I know you're looking at it and saying, uh, this looks mid. I know this because I did this. In the lead up to release, I completely dismissed this game because it looked like another one of these. And now, 10 years later, this is one of my all-time favorites. Game feel is not game look. You have to play it to feel it. And while it may look similar to the Forza, I couldn't shake the fact that it somehow felt strangely comfortable. Not a game feeling that I've played it before, but a game feeling that I've been here before. Three right, 80. Six left over the rest. Three right turns. Two right over the rest. Two left long. Six right. Cut, 60. I wasn't just lay graphics brain when I mentioned the rain. The moment I ran into Drive Club's dynamic weather, it hit me like that despicable Italian bastard from Ratatouille, instantly flashing me back to seven-year-old Punk Duck playing his first WRC game. The first time I did a drift challenge, it brought me right back to the speed weekend events in Pacific Rift. And when this happened, I knew just how fucking back we were. It's all here. Evolution has made my favorite rally game, my favorite arcade racer, and now, my favorite Simcade. Drive Club feels like a team's history coming full circle, with elements from their entire body of work on full display. Also, we are so fucking smart. I checked the credits on Drive Club, and it's practically the exact same leadership who've been steering the ship since WRC. Holy fuck! Is this what happens when you get to keep your job? Drive Club isn't MotorStorm at all. But what it is, is incredible. It also definitely isn't a single player game. Nowadays, it's a playable graveyard. A game yard. A grave play. Every race starts with a reminder that the servers were shut down in 2020. The main menu alone is a blindingly fat message that Evo has long since moved on. 90% of the tours are no longer available, you can't get the bike expansion, and here's the real kicker. Ah! You can't even make a club. You know, the thing in the title of the game? In its heyday, this game was overflowing with shit to do, but today it don't have club, and it barely have drive, 
This game should have just been called Dr To be fair, a, a server shutdown is par for the course with games like these. All the Motostorm games had theirs closed after like four years. Apocalypse lasted seven, actually. Oh, then it's clearly the better game. <laughs> On March 22nd, 2016, Evolution dropped the final DLC pack for the game titled Finish Line, featuring events such as Clocking Off and The Long Goodbye. On the same day, Sony announced Evolution Studios' newest project, Job Hunting. EVA was closed two years after Drive Club's launch. A VR version of the game had been announced in that period, but at this point, nothing could be done. The game sold 2 million copies in its first 6 months, but launching in a horrible state was a curse that Evolution could never shake off. Thank you, Shuhei Yoshida. Julian wrote down, Ed makes pain sounds here. Hey! Codemasters saw the newly orphaned talent up for grabs and put them in the back of their big van, which is a kind of car, less than a month after the gaming industry happened to them. The Codemasters put out a blog post detailing how excited they were to be working with the veterans at Evolution Studios and that nobody was getting fired for real this time. No will we. We double dog promise. That lasted for about one game. Because if Drive Club is a graveyard, I don't know what the fuck that makes Onrush. You want to know the worst part? This game's fucking awesome. It's part combat racer and part hero shooter. SSX meets Blur, and I can't even recommend it to you. Imagine playing Overwatch with bots alone. Imagine playing Brink right now. It should have worked. Everything that makes a game from EVO good is here. The team was clearly optimistic about the launch. Next project, whatever we do. Yeah then split screen because we've got the engine, because we've got the tools and we're kind of in a really good position with everything that we've built, is definitely a possibility. And what will the future hold? Well, only time will tell. So yeah, Codemasters promptly decapitated the studio. That's a direct quote, by the way, leaving them with only a very talented series of limbs to puppet around. They were renamed to Codemasters Cheshire. They made Dirt 5. The game's fine. It's competent. With their decade and a half long leadership out of the picture, Evo, the studio, wasn't allowed to die on their own terms. Or with their own name. They essentially disappeared into Codemasters. Then EA bought Codemasters. Then they actually disappeared into Criterion. Who is now a support studio for Battlefield. So where does that leave us? It leaves me missing Motorstorm. I mean, the Evolution Studios trademark is up for grabs. Someone, let's say me, could just buy it and make a new game. And make it awesome. Despite everything, he is still a cracker. Sony would send him a cease and desist, and it would be the most they've done for Evolution Studios in years. He does not think about the people who make the studio, their chemistry, the decades of shared experience. A development studio is team of people. Different people means different game. We've all heard this story before, and we're going to keep hearing it again, over and over and over, so long as Ed specifically keeps asking for it. The team behind Evolution Studios is disbanded. We're never going to know what they could have given us next, and if we want that to stop, if we want to stop shattering apart cool game studio, shuffling the pieces around like Go Fish, fucking Slapjack, we have to change the way we create and treat games. Well, we don't. Ed does. Okay. What's your timeline on AI taking over mainstream creativity? We, we uh, Sam and I, we made a, we record a podcast about that. You should go listen. Mm. Now that you've stopped using Adobe, what have you moved on to? Affinity Photo, Blender, Clip Studio, DaVinci Resolve. How do you feel about Pan and Scan living again through TikTok? I guess it's fucking TikTok. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> TikTok isn't replacing movies. I don't... whatever. Recommend a show or movie. One Piece movie number six. 
I'm not kidding. On a meta level, this is a movie about the director's trauma after working at Studio Ghibli. You don't need to know anything about One Piece to get into it. It has some of my favorite visual gags in any animation. Go watch it. <laughs>